What's up guys, Nightingale here, and welcome back to the Beginner's Handbook. Today, we are updating the Guild Guide. So, if you have seen the prior one, scrap most all of that, except for the Joining the Guild section, and we're basically going to start over. But today, what we're going to do is, to start off the video, I want to cover this for everybody, as general information. Just because this is brand new, uh, it was patched in this Thursday, so I want to cover this first, and then we're going to start it completely over and update everything for beginners. So beginners, hold on for just a minute, and this is important information for you, but for um, any player that is new, returning, um, longtime player, coming back, whatever you want to classify yourself as, this is important information you need to hear that's been updated about the guild. So let's jump in quickly now to my main guild, which is Plot Hunter. Um, and we want to immediately talk about the weekly missions first. So this is a brand new function that's recently been added into the game and is actually really cool. Now, first off, they did screw us over, but they came back with compensation. Thank you, Smilegate, for recognizing the error of your ways and uh, resetting our guild progress this week. It should have come in Sunday or Monday, actually. Um, but hey, they made up for it. They gave us a week's worth of rewards. Thank you guys so much for that. You are awesome. So what has changed about this system is now that there is a weekly total contribution reward system up here for the entire guild meaning this isn't just your progression this is your guild's progression so you guys need to be coming through and doing this which i will be uh cleaning up here uh today and tomorrow get as much as we can get in here to maybe get the brave crest maybe some people will be able to get us here i doubt we'll be able to gain the armbands but next week we will so this has been added and it's really cool now makes more meaning to this because the two most valuable things out of here the 80 armbands and the gold transmit stone two very very valuable pieces next up the next thing we're going to cover is the shop update so i will talk to you beginners in a minute about how to get this currency but for right now here's what you need to know if you still need proofs of valor or symbol of unity warhorn and i'm honestly going to say bastion of hope you do not need to be concerned with anything that I'm about to be show, showing you below that requires these commander armbands. So, from this point on, earmuffs. Alright. Veteran players. Players that have been around a bit. Newer players that have been into the game a little bit. You're going to start earning these armbands, and as you're going to see, it's a... It's going to be better because they're doing, they're working towards making things easier to obtain as far as the armbands. But what you do not need to be spending your armbands on is as follows. One, the gold transmit stones. You do not buy until all that other stuff is bought out. You do not concern yourself at all with the mystic metals. I don't care if it's a single and it resets weekly. Don't do it. 200 armbands is too expensive for this to be just buying it like that. The next biggest trap here that I know a lot of people are going to want to try to buy is this. These are a trap. Do not waste your hard-earned armbands. This is, that is 500 for one, one pull. It takes a few weeks to earn that roughly where I'm at. So these are definitely not worth it. What else is not worth it? Do not buy the rare catalysts, the epic catalysts, or the equipment conversion gem chest until you've completed all the above. And then it's you find this valuable or not. Now, I will come back in a minute and give you guys a beginner's perspective on what is actually valuable here to buy and when to start picking it up. Now that we've had that conversation, for those of you who wanted to just hear about the new shop update, that's going to wrap it up. Now we're going to jump in to the actual video, which is now going to be revamping the joining a guild video. Because there's a few things we want to update and get you guys kind of caught up to date. So if you want to hang out and see kind of what other tips and tricks that you might have missed along the way, here we go. All right. So as I don't have access to this right now, because obviously I have all guilds are um, occupied and I don't have an account that is brand new, 
In order to join a guild, it's really, really simple. This will unlock, I believe, at level 10. You will click this and you're gonna be set up with one of two options. Option number one is to join a guild. Option number two is to create a guild. Now, creating a guild will cost currency and in the beginning, you don't wanna waste your currency on that, so go join a guild. And now I'm gonna give you a couple of reasons why you should be joining a guild instead of trying to create one early on. Now, coming in here this when you click on guild you would you'd be seeing the menu here you wouldn't actually be getting a guild access menu like this you, it would tell you it'll be two buttons to click so here is why and why this is important that you join a guild that's already established is because of these two buffs right here the blessing of wealth and the blessing of knowledge this is a increased gold and increased exp if you are a brand new player you're going to see two more buffs here now obviously we've got buff weekends going on right now so there's the gm buffs that are actives i have the paid buffs but for you you probably will have some special buffs from either being a returning player or as a new player you will have some buffs here that i do not have now for the next i think week i believe is how long you have these Take advantage of them as best as you can, and this is why joining an established guild is important. It's so that you gain the extra battle EXP and the extra gold, which you will need as a leveling up player. So, let's assume you've already joined a guild. Here you go. Welcome to the guild menu interface. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to walk you down from top to bottom. So, the main guild interface, you can access the battlefield from here. Uh, you can check out your other members and see who all is here. Uh, the record of your overall guild. As you can see, we founded uh, four days ago and a year ago. We founded Plot Hunter, which is really cool milestone that we were able to hit uh, level 20 within the right around Christmas time, actually, I believe. So you can check in on stuff like that. You can check the rewards on how many people need to check in to obtain all of the stuff. And yes, there is a check in for max people, which we don't have. Um, and there's a reason why I'm not accepting those. Uh, so let's talk about Battlefield. Now, let's talk about this right now. Ancient Inheritance for me will be ending in one day, 17 hours and 17 minutes. Now I'm gonna have an entire video that I'm gonna work on tomorrow, which for you might be out in a couple days. Actually, for most people, it's gonna be, it's gonna be out after this is over with. Now I decided to do this because I want the hindsight knowledge out there. And then we're going to also come back and eventually touch on it when the new one gets announced to see if anything has changed and if opinions have changed. So there'll be two videos that you'll be wanting to look for to Ancient Inheritance. Now, Guild War, we are currently in the middle of a off-season, and we will be starting up the new season as of Monday. So I cannot actually show you anything directly in here. But if you come in on a Saturday, which is typically um, the first day of, the let's say, the Guild Reset is you're gonna get this menu and I will cover the things you need to know in just a second. And then for um, eventual account, this will be this will say blocked out and I believe it's level 60. It's level 50 or level 60 that world boss is blocked out, but we're gonna walk over that in just a minute as well. So let's start with the Guild War thing, which is something that is very important that you should do as a new player as soon as you join a guild is come in here and set this up. And I will explain why. So the first thing that you want to do is come in here and wherever this button is at, there is a team formation button. Typically, it will be down in, in this area over here. Let's see if you can see the click. Yeah, it'll be over in this area. Uh, you'll have a guild message when it's normal, during the normal. Just click team formation and you'll be sent to a menu that looks just like this. Start and click that button right there. Day one, click that button right there. Now, returning players, veteran players, and all that stuff, don't click that button. But if you've just gotten started, just click that, let it auto assign your best units, or it literally it's just taking your highest uh, combat power units and putting it on your team. Cool, you're done. You don't have to worry about that. Now I will quickly go over this just so that you do understand when you get a little further into the game on how to actually think about your teams. Now, we were talking about this today on stream and, and this is just a random Guild War defense that I've been theory crafting and may or may not actually let through. But there's a couple of things that you will want to know. Uh, understand that the leader position is the foremost ally. So if there's anything that is triggered based off of that, this is the unit that if there's damage share to a specific unit, it says the foremost ally, it is the team lead spot. Um, and in the case of Troublemaker Crow Zet, his passive works on the back two units, which is where Ha Young and Spirit Eye Selene are sitting. So you will need to make sure that you understand your team formations and where to place units based on, that, on things like that. But I will also state that if I move these 
to say here, these are still technically the lead spot. And the reason I say this is because they're still technically the foremost ally in this case. And the reason why I'm saying that is because you may have, eventually, you'll have characters that have imprints, like, let's say, if I go grab Apocalypse Ravi, and we pop her here, you can see that it's highlighting where her team imprint will be active at. So you will want to make sure your units are at least set up in that. So going over this, you do want to make sure get as much you know get as much value as you can out of your units just because it says team lead does not mean he needs to sit here because obviously he's not going to be getting the hp imprint he needs the hp imprint so you'll move your tank over but just note that the front row in this case in guild wars the foremost ally is the guy in the front row and the back row is the back two units that you see with like high young and um spirit Iseline, landy and luna okay so setting up Guild War defenses is a whole can of worms, and it's really about what can you introduce that is the most plausible of them beating. In the early case, for new players, which is what we're talking about, you're probably going to get steamrolled. Don't worry about it. Give it time. Talk to your guildmates. Talk to people. Talk to YouTubers, streamers, whatever, and they can help you out. Now, again, everything is subjective based off of gear, units, and honestly, the guilds you go up against. If you're in more dead guilds, you're going to fight more dead guilds, so your d defenses may or may not get hit. If it looks toxic and you're facing a lot of weaker guilds, they may not touch it because they don't. They may think it's completely uber geared. We've had both. We've had it where it looked easy and it was toxically geared, and we've had it where it looked hard as everything and it literally had no gear on, and we could drop single units in and solo them. It's been fun times. So that's basically the defense in a nutshell. Now... Uh, something else just to point out that's cool about Saturdays is you can check out your record, which I will humiliatingly show you mine. Mine is trash this season. Uh, I also forgot a couple days just because I was busy and I've been saving my attacks towards the end to try to take down enemy towers. And if you get distracted or fall asleep accidentally with a phone in your hand while you are auto farming, I promise that didn't happen to me once or twice this season. And uh, yeah, you forget to attack and you wake up and it's reset good times but yeah you can check out your previous seasons your previous seasons record you can look at your current season record or just the previous war record so you can see i got absolutely smashed on defense now personally i am under the assumption that there is no perfect defense okay but you can have some that are really really good and really really bad it just comes down to who attacks it and what their theory craft is and then you can also check your war ranking here which is actually pretty cool uh but everything's been reset because again new season starts monday all right now let's get out of this and move on to the next part of the battlefield which is going to be i say the next most important thing for newer players when you get to this so some of you if you're watching this right now you may be level 10 level 20 but once you get here, this is where this information is going to come in handy. And we're going to do this right here on the spot for you today. So the first thing you do once you've unlocked this is make sure you come down here and do exactly this. Click that button right there. Now, in the beginning, that's why you want to click this. And it's going to auto assign everything just to get you started. But now, get some time under your belt. Or if you've been playing for a while, say you're a veteran returning player and you're trying to check out what's new in the guild system, do not click this button right here. I'm going to help you out so that you can get Triple S a little bit easier. Now, what you want to do is you want to come here to the menu, click CP, let it take your top four units and make sure that their imprints are sitting where there are imprints, if there are any. And in this case, I believe Landy should have an imprint as well. Uh, hero has already been selected. Is it not showing Landy's imprint? No, because she's under attack. Never mind. Uh, I didn't have it moved over. So, in this case, you want to have Vivian sitting here. Now, why is this important? Early on, the game is literally a CP calculator for this. The highest CP that your team has, plus the highest CP of the friend that you bring in, is going to determine your score. Because right now, in the early aspects of it, Enhanced Element isn't going to give you the bonus enough to be able to do this. Now, once everything has been set up and set up roughly the same way, as you can see, I was messing around with this just to show you that it doesn't change the stats. It just changes the uh, number. Now, my number is a little bit lower because I'd be willing to bet somebody right here is missing an artifact. 
which I will go uh, check her after the video. Because I was like, why is my number like 25,000 lower than it normally is? But just make sure that everything's been applied and you may get bonuses you may not. It's not necessary. I'm just saying it's not necessary in the beginning. Eventually, you will be able to have all of these and you'll you'll have some it's insane numbers as you progress. So now let's jump in and actually talk to you about the system. So you're going to get two attacks while this is up. Now, here you go. Here's how you want to go through this. Now, you can see here, everybody's got enhanced element, enhanced element, enhanced element, enhanced element. Why? Because they clicked the auto button. Also, because most people are going to have, in this case, a lot of their water units are, are heavily built. So, these are going to score naturally higher. Now, our big Megalodon guys that have 600, almost 700k teams have already been used. Those things are used in the first hour of uh, world boss reset but what i want to show you here is what you want to do is you want to scroll through the list and occasionally you can see like right here we got a 566 we've got a 574 they're not necessarily in numerical order so you will need to make sure you go through and select the highest one in this case i believe it's kisses and cream we're going to hit team formation and now the next thing you want to do is click yep you guessed it that button right there now in the beginning, yours may or may not fill out completely like this. In my case, because I do have a diverse unit unit pool, I do have a lot of these units geared, and I'm able to have a lot of units that I can hit every objective that you see here, there, and over there. I can achieve all this just because I have a bunch of units. Early on, you won't. Now, obviously, the more you pull, the more you gear, the more likely you are to get more of these, and your enhanced element goes up, and you're going to score high. But here, watch this. We're going to go ahead and hit start right now, and we're going to walk you through this, and this is one of the most amazing pieces of content that's been ruined by Smile Game. Literally, you put all this effort into the design, the concept, and the function, and you turn it into a cut scene. That's right. I'm not doing anything. It's doing itself, it's auto-calculating all those wonderful numbers and saying we're using our skills and we're doing this, and now it's literally doing all of this based off of your CP. So now it's going into round two, we're gonna hopefully get, you know, the magical awesome number, everything's gonna go do their skills and whatnot. And you're probably staring at that nice little skip button up there, but like I said, we're gonna sit through this once in respect because they put all this, look at how awesome this looks and it's ruined by being a cutscene. So there you go. We have all the rewards too in this, which is perfect that I get to show off to you guys. So, we have three levels of rewards here. And this doesn't matter really where your score is at, you can get these types of rewards, but obviously the higher you get, the better the reward. So you've got the normal reward, which is a non-glowing chest. You have the blue glowing reward, which is a enhanced, and then you have the I would call it the epic, since they love using the word epic here, the epic reward, which is glowing yellow. So we'll pop it and I'll talk about the rewards. Perfect. Okay. So one of the most sought after epic rewards is the Molagora. You can also get Catalyst here. I think you can get um, Gold Transmit Stones also show up in this. The normal rewards can be gear. As you can see, you can get red gear. In this case, it's actually... If this hit crit chance, I'd probably say screw it. We'll see what happens. But it doesn't have crit damage on it on a crit damage set. I'd probably see if it rolled crit chance. But it's an okay piece. It's a red piece. Um, we've got a decent piece here. I mean, if you really need crit set, it could be good. Uh, but here is the blue reward, which was penguins. This can also be, um, this can be normal catalysts. This can be, um, I think also gear, uh, gold reward. And I don't think anything, I can't remember what else has shown up in this. Normally I just click through this stuff. I don't even care what I get. Just show me the score. Now let's go ahead and talk about you know, your next run. So you're going to come back through and just for the sake of the video, this is why I mean, eventually it won't matter. Now, as you can see, the lower the, the lower the number, the less likely people are to click on it. Now, I can still probably do really well if I take somebody like Shiro. I can probably still score double S plus or triple S plus on a ice day. On a off day, I don't know if I could score triple S without taking some of the higher end ones. But eventually it'll come to the point where it just really doesn't matter. Especially if you get in a guild eventually with more players 
And see, now we get to just do this. This is why, I mean, it's ruined because you, it's just over and done with. And we get to see the cool jump and it's over and done with. Nope, I got double S plus, but uh, hey, I got a gold reward. So it really doesn't matter. There's you an epic catalyst. Um, but basically what this is really here for is it's going to give you a small increase of gold daily and a little extra brave crest, potentially some gear that you're going to get and uh, occasionally. I got really lucky for this video that I actually was able to show you two very sought after rewards. The uh, epic catalyst and the oligora. So, but there's another item here that we are also after. The participation reward. Right here. The proof of courage. This is why you want to do these at every time every time world boss is up this is what you're after and now let's go in and show you what for also let's talk about this real quick is the contribution reward for new players don't worry about this i know you're gonna sit there and go but i really want to get these rewards it'll come with time eventually you'll spend where you'll just be getting this box and then eventually you'll work on this this is just going to come with time the longer the more you up your account the more you spend and develop your account the easier this is going to be to achieve as you can see i'm well over capped on mine and it resets in a day and 17 hours so this is a weekly thing you'll eventually you'll get there but don't don't stress about that reward yet okay so let's talk about the brave crest now there's another place that you can earn them and that is just a second coming up in actually we'll go ahead and talk about it now you can earn them here now they did really, they did a nice job. They revamped this. Uh, they've made it a little bit cleaner. So all you need to do, and this is a little something here for you new players, you need to come here and you need to do this daily. Veteran players, you should be too. You're stingy. You're being a little too stingy. Uh, the reason being is because this is what funds the guild. This is what gives you your guild buffs and this is what is allowing you to um, to get the another source of, command, of the commander's armbands. Here. The valuable this is a very 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 valuable currency and honestly so is the brave crest and we'll talk about all that and where to spend in just a, in a few minutes but we're going to go to aid after this but this is where you come in with your proofs of courage that you've earned through guild and urgent missions anytime you get an urgent mission please go do them especially early on you're going to be getting a bunch of these before you can really take use of them but go ahead get them get them set up and keep donating these to your guild because this is what buys you some stuff in the captain shop which i'll cover in a few minutes so let's go talk about aid all right now i thought ahead and i brought my other guild up that i have not done my aid on so that we can show you so we're over here in thick plot on one of my on my gm account here and we're going to talk about the request aid so Let's go ahead and start here, and we're gonna click on this. Now you can see that you have access to runes, catalysts, and crafting materials. A lot of people's first thought is to go for the catalyst. Now here you only can request the catalyst that you personally have in your inventory. But you don't wanna do this. Now, Let's talk about the general stigma of the community and general the general thought process of this so that you can understand why you've probably been kicked out of guilds without realizing it if you've been requesting catalysts. So here you go. This is going to be one of the last times, I say last times, but then I'm probably going to have this conversation on stream first thing Monday morning. But hey, you know what? Let's try to have this for the final time. So here is why, and I'm going to give you two reasons. Reason number one, why catalysts are highly, highly, highly pushed and pushed against um, having requested is this one it is highly disadvantaged to you the player and you your guild mates especially if you're in an equal newer beginner guild where it's a lot of newer players because if you request those catalysts and that newer player is also working on their units that are roughly around the same playtime as you they need those catalysts just as equally as you do now there is also another part to this. It only costs you 120 energy to go farm that catalyst. And so if it's bad for you and it's bad for the player, but why is it good for you to go farm it instead? Because if you go to the stage that actually has the catalyst that you're after, not only are you going to start earning 
potentially Penguin EXP, which is what's leveling up your units. If you need more information on that, I have a guide specifically on EXP. It's an hour long. TED Talk. Legit. Um, but we go over, you know, gaining EXP. You're gaining silver from the stage from farming. You know, selling the, the trash gear that's there. You have the potential of getting a catalyst drop. And if it's not the catalyst you specifically need, you're getting a catalyst drop in general, which is great. And you're also earning AP, which is what allows you to buy the catalyst from the shop if which is where you're actually going to more bet on, is that you're going to go farm the 120 energy, which will give you the 120 AP to buy the catalyst directly from the shop that you need. So, it benefits you, the player, to go spend the energy and not take it from your friend who is also trying to do the same thing you are doing. Now, reason number two is it's inefficient for you and the guild. Here's why. Because if you look right here, you see that we have some that have requested small runes and some that are requesting hunt materials. If we also scroll through here, you can probably see maybe some graders. No, most every... Yeah, here we got some graders. So, the reason why this is done is because this material isn't really used that much. This specific crafting material. You're going to get a bunch of these throughout playing the game. And it's also easy to farm up. Now, here's the thing. What this is actually this system is really here for is actually the guild. This is a system to where you earn daily Brave Crest. Now, if you go back here and we click back on Plot Hunter, you can see my donation limit is 200 of 200. And here's how you achieve it very easily. Let's pop back, and here we go. You need to donate a set amount of the Mana Drake Claws or any sort of max level crafting material in this case. Well, second to max, but it's max for this. And you need to get one greater rune done a day. So the concept here is that you and your friends are passing back and forth the Mana Drake Claw, since that's what everybody unifyingly goes around. Wyvern's one of the most... Well, it's Wyvern's the universal starting place for everybody. And it's going to be something everybody has access to. So being able to get these to pass them around that day is easy. Now, by doing this, you're gaining Brave Crests. And with the greater rune, you're able to max out your daily income easier. If, by doing Catalyst, it's actually a lot less beneficial because only two people can donate to it, and it's not worth nearly what a greater rune. It's actually worth, if you really want to know, which is sad, it's worth the same as a normal rune. Now, in this case, the reason why we let the smaller guilds do it is because typically they have more of the small runes, than they do the greater runes. But as you get into guilds like where Plot Hunter is, we typically don't have the small runes, we have the greater runes. So it's better that we pass them around. But it's also mathematically more efficient to do the greater rune because of hitting the 200 cap. Instead of having to donate to two people, you only have to donate to one, which allows more people to be able to hit the greater runes. Now I know this is a lot of information, but there's a reason for this. So, that's why we specifically say, do not request Catalyst in any of the guilds. And you can see it right here inside of our notice in Thick Plot and Thicker Plot, and normally it's in Plot Hunter as well. Hunt mats and greater runes only, and there's our Discord. And this is done, we hold this standard for all of our guilds. It's the same for Plot Hunter, it's the same for Thick Plot, Thicker Plot. When Plots R Us was open, we held it there, and Apple Plot, which is our EU guild. All of us hold that exact same standard, and most guilds do as well. So, now, moving on, we're going to talk about the shop in a little more detail than... Um, actually, we can use this one since it's not bought out. We're going to talk about this one in a little more detail just to get you, the newer player, understanding what you need and when you need it. Okay, so the most important thing here is one of two artifacts in the beginning, and you only need to get one to start with. So... Depending on where you're at, if you are clearing Wyvern 13 and your tank is not getting obliterated, you probably will start with Symbol of Unity as your first artifact from here. But if you are struggling to get to Wyvern 13, your tank is dying, you're probably going to need Proof of Valor to push you along the edge. This is a universal artifact that can go on anybody. Actually, all of these are universal and can go on anyone. So... In this case, we typically have new players start with a Proof of Valor, and we put it on their tank, which is typically Angelica or Montmorency, and then all of a sudden their Wyvern issues from their tank dying is typically what normally fails if it's not a debuff issue or a speed issue, prevent, you know, helps them succeed and gets them to Wyvern 13 
and clearing it pretty successful. Now, I will say this. If you happen to be one of those lucky few who start and you get early on a General Purgus, which is a four-star light unit, and you have the four-star artifact, Sepulchrum, you actually don't need Proof of Valor. Because Sepulchrum is actually a decent alternative to Proof of Valor. It just works in a different way. It has to ramp up to have the best damage uh, mitigation, where Proof of Valor starts at the best and works it way, its way down. But in the case of General Purgus, being that it's a warrior-exclusive artifact, it's not used on many people, it's typically more preferred that General Purgus uses it because it frees up now Proof of Valor for somebody else, which may actually be more beneficial to have as you start getting into PvP. So if you do happen to have General Purgus, then your next probably option is to pick up your first symbol of unity. Uh, the next good artifact here is probably getting Warhorn. There are many units out there that can benefit from having this buff going along in your in your team. And then eventually, as debuffs get more prevalent, you're going to probably start seeing Bastion of Hope start showing up more often. Okay, now, moving on through this really, really quickly is in the beginning for new players, and I mean the beginning, you may not be buying the Terra from Tasma. Just because getting Brave Crest in the first maybe week or so, you probably won't really be able to do. This is a month long thing, so it really depends on where you're at in the game when you pick this up. So again, we're saying do not buy the gold transmit stones. You do absolutely 100% every Monday. It's the reason why we say Mola Mondays. There's two Molas come available that are easy and very easy for players to get. It's this one and the PvP one. So make sure you come in here and grab this. Now there are some other easy ones to grab, but I'm just saying, as far as like the easiest currencies that don't require a lot, it's this and the PVP one. Silver Transmit Stones can get you the two free Molagors out of the Silver Transmit Shop, which is also really easy, but it does require either foddering units or uh, saving up from uh, rewards as they're given out. Uh, once again, do not buy the Mystic Medals or the 4-star, 5-star connection tickets. They are an absolute scam. Also, under no circumstances should you be buying anything that requires armbands below here. You absolutely should be buying the Catalyst Chest. It is super, super valuable. The Equipment Conversion Chest is definitely something you want to start picking up early on. But the one of the most important currencies here that you need to be working on as a new player, and I'm talking a player who has not completed Nick's Seed Sanctum, you need to be buying this Compass every single week. Reason being is Nixie Sanctum is one of the longer labyrinths inside the game, and trust me, you're gonna want these tokens because it takes you a while to do it. So this is one extra free entry to help you once a week get into Nixie Sanctum. Thankfully for you, you can enter it once a day. Uh, and once you get into like normal raid, it takes two keys so you can enter it basically every other day. Um, I use this as a once a week thing. I still buy it just because I'm amassing tokens just in case I ever get lazy on Hell Raid. All right, and then eventually you'll come down here and you'll start buying artifact charms because they're fantastic. But also once you get st established, you'll be buying the, the, the uh, Terra Phantasma always. So, and eventually once you've bought out all the artifacts, sure, you can come down here and you can start, you know, swinging on the mystics and if you feel like you want to finish off a connection that's randomly sitting great if you really want to go after these epic catalysts you can but you have to understand on how hard these are you'll see why i'm making such a big fuss about this all right now i'm going to quickly talk to you about the captain's shop here just so that you can understand and i also realized i'm a bad um gm and i need to go pop this on the other guild in a minute so for those of you who do decide to be a gm you do need to note this it takes 16 members to keep this these two buffs up at all times. So that means every member needs to be donating their 50,000 a day to ensure that you keep these buffs up. Now, under no circumstances should you ever pop the guild blessing buff. Under no circumstances. It's horrible. I really wish that Smilegate would, you know, listen to the community and either make this like a friendship buff or a uh, item drop buff something throw a dog a bone get rid of this this is garbage um there's also a reason why you do not see me sending this is because they only have 311 and if i do this they can't buy this buff so the guild supply chest is also another reason why to join an established guild because the, these can be sent out about once every week once every two weeks depending on the uh donations of the proofs of courage uh, we'll determine on how fast these roll around uh plot hunter i think cycles about every 10 days where this cycles about every two weeks just depending on people's mileage and donations 
Um, this one is also another reason why you should be an established guild because this should be sent out daily under no circumstances should this ever not be sent out to your guild. Now this one, the energy one, is very limited and I will do this actually right now on Plot Hunter because they need this one sent unless I've already done it. No, I have not done it on this one either. So now we have hunt buffs specifically going right now. And in Plot Hunter, we can afford to do this. As you can see, we've got 15 million. Now, I only, and normally most people say, only pop that gold buff, or that version, the gold energy buff, when there are e like high energy spending events. Um, so in case of like Advent or like something that takes, or three week long stories, and we've had a hunt buff, you know, taxing on energy, do we pop this? But just during the normal progression of the game, you only pop the 50 energy one. This is, you cannot sustain this one. I think the last time I did the math, um, I think it might be possible at 30 out of 30 donating every day, but I don't remember. It's been a long time since I checked. I actually think you do go negative at some point. Um, now, let's go back and just quickly talk about, again, the weekly missions. Uh, the only thing we're really wanting to say here is just please do these because now there is reason to do it. You're gaining armbands. You're getting, you're helping the guild out. You're giving the guild proofs of courage. These are the ones you cannot spend. These are automatically donated to the guild. And this is, you know, a lot of great rewards here. So eventually we will be getting the uh, great achievement, which who knows what in the world this is going to be. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is I will show you inside Ancient Inheritance so you at least know what is coming. So Ancient Inheritance is, as of right now, a two-week-long event. And it's garbage in how they've set this up. I'm sorry. There, there's a better way of doing this. But, hey, it's a great first start, and it's actually pretty cool at what they're doing. I just think they need to come in, and there's a few things they need to fix. But I'll cover that in its video. But here's what you basically can look forward to. It's got a shop where you can get some pretty good gear. Not gonna lie, this is great tamarin gear for those who need tamarin or Desert Jewel Bazaar. You know, basically a Soul Weaver or something that needs effectiveness ER Soul Weaver piece. Uh, the modification gems are cool. The Mola Gores are hype. You know, you've got bookmarks, uh, epic artifact, and greater artifact charms. The gifts of success is kind of sus, but hey... Uh, whatever, and then the ancient or the the limited, the lesser uh, artifact charms. It's just a burn currency. Uh, but yeah, I'll be curious to see what happens in the second one. It is an insane system in here. We're working on the floor four boss. Um, and the cool thing is, is if you're a beginner and you have access to this, I think it's level 40 you get access to this, you can start using any unit that you have, uh, chuck it in there. Uh, I will go over a guide on that and give you the kind of the short version in a, another video. But basically, take, you know, unleveled units. Some of these units on my account are not leveled up. Kawazu literally is not leveled up. But his stats don't look like they're not leveled up. Uh, reason being is because Ancient Inheritance is, uh, is thought about the newer players and the players that just don't have a lot of units. Uh, allows you to use your unleveled units and as if they were completely maxed out. I do not have Kawazu plus 15, I promise you. He is not plus 15 on my account. But it's really cool. I think this is definitely a great way to be inclusive with everything. But I'll cover all of this stuff in the Ancient Inheritance video. But yes, you do have something to look forward to. It's a very big map, especially when you get down here, considering it's four floors. And this is floor number four. You can look at all the area we didn't even explore just because we beelined it straight to the four wardens so that we could get this thing down. So... This is something that you'll have to look forward to at some point. It will be limited content, so this is not going to be around forever or up at all times for you whenever you join a guild. But when it is up, we will have information on that. So I know this video is extremely long, and you're probably like, why on earth is this video so long? But now you see why. There's a lot that you want to cover and talk about in the general aspect of guilds. So hopefully we've got you guys completely caught up, and I felt like this is a much better way of explaining... Um, the guild system and just updating it for 2022 a few things have changed but for the most part just some thought process and things that i wanted to get out there so that everybody has the right mindset to get you guys going in the right direction so if you guys have any questions feel free to hit me up in the comments below i'll do whatever i can to try to help you guys out in any shape form or another and i will see you guys in the next one